Okay, I'm going to be reading uh, in a passage uh, today from 2 Corinthians 3, and I'm going to start with, uh, and I'm going to talk about transformation and increasing in the likeness of Christ. And the Bible teaches that as we go and we progress on in the Christian life, we're going to be transformed more and more by each year we keep pressing forward into being like him. We we'll reflect him more and more with each passing year as we keep growing. And we're going to read about this concept in uh, in 2 Corinthians 3. Uh, we'll start with uh, verse 15. Even to this day, oh, when Moses is read, the veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So basically what he's saying is when we turn to faith in Christ, that blindfold is taken off our eyes. We can see clearly. Uh, now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. Amen. That means when we turn to Christ, we are freed from our life of sin and the bondage of sin and what it brings into our lives. It keeps us captive. It keeps us held back. It doesn't help us really reach our potential. And we'll, we'll find freedom in Christ. We'll find freedom by turning to Christ and believing in the gospel. Sin's power is broken. We'll still struggle with temptation, but we do not have to live a lifestyle of sin. We will be filled with the Spirit and can choose to live the righteous life. Now the Lord is Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who have unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is spirit. So basically when we turn to Christ, when we truly believe the gospel with, with sincere heart, we repent of our sins and we believe in faith in Jesus Christ. He fills us with his spirit. He gives us a heart of flesh in it as opposed to a heart of stone as Ezekiel talks about. And so we'll see throughout the scripture this context this concept is uh, is spoken about, and uh, one of those passages is in Second Chronicles, I believe, 26. It talks about King Jotham, where it says, Jotham grew powerful because he walked steadfastly with the Lord his God. And so, the more Jotham, for example, walked faithfully to the Lord, he grew more powerful. And it's like, it's like the concept, he was increasing his strength as he was doing that. Job 17.9 says, Nevertheless, the righteous will hold fast to their ways, and those with clean hands will grow stronger. And we'll take a look at Daniel 12, for example, where it says, In Daniel 12, verse 2, it says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will wake up to everlasting life, others to everlasting shame with contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heaven. Those who lead many to <coughs> and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. So, what does it talk about? You know, we see this is uh, explained in Daniel 12. It says, uh, "Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever." Yeah, we see uh, the concept of shining like stars mentioned later on in, uh, uh, in uh, Philippians, actually. Paul talks about this concept, and we'll turn to it. We'll, we'll read through it, and uh, we'll see what Paul in the New Testament has to say about this concept. We see how Daniel speaks of this concept. We're called to shine the light of Christ. We're called to reflect his light to other people. And like Daniel says, the wise will shine like the stars. And so we see in <clears throat> Philippians 2, it says, we'll start with verse 12. It says, therefore, my dear friends, have you, as you have always obeyed in my presence, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault in a warped and crooked generation, 
Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. <clears throat> so let's examine that. So you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. So what is one of the ways we do that? We are to... Uh, do everything without grumbling or arguing. And so as we're choosing to put off the old sinful nature, as we're choosing to resist the pull of the flesh, because what's what's one of the pulls of the flesh that we have? Well, when we don't like something, we're tempted to complain about it. We're tempted to argue about it. We're tempted to grumble about it and throw a fit about it, right? That's, that's an act of the flesh. That is an attitude of the flesh. And so the more we put off those old attitudes and behaviors, those old patterns of doing things, like Romans 12 says, do not be conformed any longer to these patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So, when we put off those old ways and we choose to put on Christ ways, we will grow and grow into more of his likeness and we'll start to reflect Jesus Christ more to those around us. So one of the things the world likes to do is likes to grumble and complain. When they don't like something, they'll, they'll make it known. They'll, they'll go to Facebook. They'll go to their friends. They'll complain about it. You know, we see that happening all the time. But one of our attitudes as Christians should be thanksgiving, not grumbling. Uh, in 2 Thessalonians, I believe it is, 5.17, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we're seeing... In this passage in Philippians 2, it talks about verse 13, one of my favorite verses. For it is God who works in you both to will and act according to, to fulfill his good purposes. But in order for God to work in us, to both will and act according to his good purposes, we must first receive Christ and be filled with his spirit. Because when we turn to Christ, our sins are forgiven, and now God can send his Holy Spirit to permanently reside in our lives. Because sin no longer becomes a barrier. We have believed in Christ. He has paid the penalty for our sins. He has died on the cross for our sins, risen again to give a, grant us access to the Spirit, His Spirit, to live in our midst. In the Old Testament times, the Spirit of God would reside in an actual temple or or in Moses' time, the tent of meeting. But, you know, we have it even better now because... Through Christ, the perfect sacrifice, God makes it available for God's Spirit to live inside our hearts, inside our beings, and empower us to live the righteous life. Before that, in order for God's presence to be among the people, there had to be a certain sacrificial system set up so God could temporarily overlook the sins of the people. Otherwise, there would be no way he could make his presence available among them. There had to be some system set up in which he could overlook sin. But you know, with the fulfillment of Christ coming into the world, he became the perfect sacrifice. And that's why we no longer need animal sacrifices. That's why animal sacrifices have become obsolete, is because Jesus died a more perfect sacrifice than that of an animal, you know. And so, we through faith in Jesus Christ and his blood can receive God's spirit into our presence, and we are called to live and act according to his good purposes. What does Philippians 2.13 say? Say, for it is God who works in you both the will and act according to his good purpose. That means God is moving inside of us. And it's like in Ezekiel where it talks about, I will take away their heart of stone and I will give them a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in them and I will move them to follow my laws. And so any good thing that we are prompted to do that we feel inspired to do is that is truly good. That is the motivation of the Holy Spirit inside us, moving us to do what pleases God. And so when we feel that gentle nudge to do this or that, and we know it's the right thing to do, that's the Holy Spirit working inside of us, enabling us to do what God would have us to do. And so we ought to pray that the Lord would work in us daily to carry out his good purpose for our lives. And, you know, through that, 
when we align ourselves with his spirit, <clears throat> when we align ourselves with his spirit, not just what we want, not just what we think is best, not just what we want to do, but when we just align ourselves with his word and his spirit, he will begin to transform us more and more the more we walk in that way. And that is the power of the transformed life. We just got to continually, daily, yield ourselves to the Spirit of God and the teaching of God's Word. And He will begin to bring about glorious things out of that. God bless.